It's time to recap our November 2022 Bliss Cruise. Every time we go on a swinger cruise, the experience is just a little different. It's a choose-your-own-adventure swingcation. Whatever you want, you'll find it. Welcome to Swinger University with Ed and Phoebe. We aren't affiliates of Bliss Cruise, we aren't travel agents, and we got nothing for free. Aside from the little tchotchkes and swag that they gave out to everybody that stopped by the Ensemble Lounge each day at 5.30. Be sure to listen to our pre-cruise episode on what to expect on a swinger cruise. This time, the cruise was once again different, but in a good way. There are a lot of familiar faces, so that was comforting because this is our third cruise. We were approached by a lot of people. One, because we had on our Swinger University t-shirts, because we're out. And so we wanted our fans to see us and we wanted to promote the podcast. If you are interested in meeting a lot of people, wear something interesting because there were people wearing interesting clothes, sexy clothes that were conversation starters. This is just everyday clothing at the buffet, right? At lunchtime, in the morning, whatever, late at night, funny t-shirts, sexy things. It is a great conversation starter and a way to get to know people. So it worked for us with our t-shirts, but I know it'll work for you because I commented on other people's clothes. If you're a little shy and you want people to approach you, wear something interesting. We're going to talk about the ship, the entertainment and the swinger experience. Cabin types will vary. And so talk to your travel agent about what kind of cabin you might want. There are all types of sizes and you know the cost that goes with those. But uh, one of our podcast friends, thoughts and perspectives, they got a cabin where the paid restaurants have a built-in reservation. So they don't have to RSVP and only the people in that, that deck level or those cabins right. can go to those restaurants. And so it was really nice and convenient for them if they didn't want to go to buffet or the general dining. And that was part of their package, which was pretty cool. I didn't know about that. It was great for them. It was a little disappointing for us because we wanted to go to dinner with them and we couldn't because we weren't in the right, we weren't in the right cabin. We weren't in the right tax brackets. <laughs> Yeah, that too. And then Sapphic Swingers, another podcast friend of ours, they were there as well and they brought their own party. And so what they did with their travel agent, they booked a bank of rooms together. Boop, boop, boop. And so that way they could open the balcony all along their rooms. And so they had this thoroughfare from room to room to room. Their own little private hallway. They did. And they didn't leave their room for a few days, I don't think. Yeah, they had some fun in their rooms. Yes, they did. Um, and <laughs> if, if you do have a balcony room and you're friends with the, the next door, just ask the, um, the stewards mm. to open the, the balconies. But basically, there's just like a swing away door and they'll yeah. open them up for you. Yeah. Let's talk a little tech, but we're going to keep it really light. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, we didn't release episodes daily yeah. um, because of the Wi-Fi. So to, to kind of talk to that a little bit without getting into a complete gripe session about how bad the internet was, um, if you have to work, first, shame on you. Second, um, it happens. If you're on a newer ship, the internet seems to be better. So when we were on the Oasis last year, um, the, the internet was great. We were uploading episodes daily so we thought we could do it this time yeah. this is a, an older ship that was remodeled so they redecorated the inside right but we don't think they changed any of the infrastructure because the internet was <clears throat> poop um the other bummer that we had with wi-fi was because of the intermittent nature of it and the app that we were using to communicate, there was a Bliss app that you could message other people. By room number, which was really handy sure. in port. As long as you knew the room number, it was super easy. The problem with it was every time you sent a message, it didn't 
update the UI and sometimes you would end up triple or quadruple sending because it wasn't responsive and you end up with like four versions of the same message going back and forth. Which is fine. It's annoying, but the, the worst part is you just, sometimes you just gave up and stopped connecting because the delay was so great. Right. You, or you couldn't have, connect or it deleted the messages or you Right. You had to close them. the app yeah. and reopen it. So anyway, if what's the takeaway from, from all this? You can't really rely on the communication apps or the technology in order to make connections with people right. on the ship. So, what do, what so do the do? takeaway is yeah. if you see a couple and you want to connect with them, walk up to them, pick a date, pick a time and actually show up on that uh, date and time. So just say, hey, let's let's get dinner. We'll meet you at the, right. the, the buffet, the wherever. Uh, at X time and show up. And what if I change my mind? Well, that's the big trick. If you change your mind, you're going to end up ghosting them because it's going to be hard to message them. If you did know their room, you could use your phone in the room and leave them a message. But I don't think anybody ever called us. Everyone is given a whiteboard message, uh, a, a whiteboard and a pen with your, your, your gift bag when you get on the boat. Right. It's waiting in your room. So you could have left them a message there or you just show up and say, hey, you know, we're not feeling well or we're going to take a rain check. And then yeah. that way you don't ghost them. The, the really bad thing about ghosting somebody on the ship or or having a bad interaction, uh, you'll see them periodically throughout the, the week. And, yeah. you know, and then you, it's awkward. You, and then it's just awkward. <laughs> the food. So, yeah, you'll see them usually at the buffet and the food. This time, mm, not so great. I would say by day four, it, it started to taste better, but I was a little surprised. It had no flavor. I mean, it looked tasty, it smelled tasty, but it did not taste good. It yeah. just, it was tasteless. And I thought it was me. And, and so I asked Ed and he's like, nah, it has no flavor. And then and a lot of other people, other people unsolicited too. said, is the food tasteless? And I go, yeah. yeah. So I don't know what was up with that, but something changed. Maybe they ran out of salt. I don't know. Maybe that's what those big white bags were when oh, they were in yeah, port and they were loading. One. <laughs> salt. So. And the other portion of that too, in, in addition to the flavorlessness, yeah. um, if that's a word, which it probably isn't, the variety also increased about day four. So yes. it was almost identical identical food every single time yeah, not and a then fan. day four all of a sudden there was a lot more choices although yes. desserts in general were were not really our taste we only had like two or three desserts that were reasonable so the ice cream was very good ice cream was good most of the other desserts i didn't care for but i am a picky dessert person right let's talk about photography yeah so photography um unfortunately it was not the best experience for us, which is really sad because on the last cruise, we got some of the best photos that ever. we've ever taken as a last couple. Last two cruises, the photography was epic. Yeah. The profile picture, the picture that we used to come out, we use it on our business cards. We use this photo everywhere taken on the cruise last year. This year, they cropped our feet off. They had these weird green screen and white screen back or backgrounds. So we had a friend who was wearing a white suit with a white background. You couldn't see him. He It was just like a head floating around. Yeah. It was the weirdest choice of backgrounds. And th the other really unfortunate part was they were short staffed on photographers. Yeah. So they didn't have multiple photo stations. They supposedly were photographing people in different places on the ship, but we never saw them. Mm -mm. So it was really hard to get your photo. And then it was weird. We didn't buy any photos. No, we Not bought one. none, which was so strange for us. Because we bought the whole package last yeah, year. Yeah, and I was so bummed. Very but bummed. So we, we tried to hedge our bet and said, well, let's stop by the studio because they have a, right. a, a studio on board. And then we heard the price and we were like, eh, no, no. Okay. It was like $400, $500 uh, for, for, for an hour. I think an hour session. Yeah. And we thought about it and we were like. And you get like three photos. Oh, and you got them 
Oh, they were printed, printed and they were like eight by ten canvas or something. Yeah, and it we, was strange. We just wanted the electronic com copies, and that was more. And we're like, no, right. thank you, because right. I want to be able to do what I want with my electronic copy. I don't, I don't need it on a canvas. I want to put it where I want to put it. Right. So options were limited. So that did not work out. Yeah. So th those sounded like bummers, but there was a lot of really good stuff. And let's yeah. talk about some of that stuff. So yeah. for example, every night there was entertainment. Yes. Every single night. Yes. There was a welcome aboard show with Malcolm and Giuseppe and those guys were hilarious. I mean, Malcolm's hilarious, but Giuseppe was having a great time. Um, he was actually the ship cruise director. And of course, Malcolm is the Bliss Cruise director. Right. So they were like they are Abbott and Costello. Yes. You know, you name a, a comedy duo, it was hilarious. They're so good together. So many like double entendres oh my God. and I, lots of blowjob jokes. Oh my and gosh. It was just it was great. So funny. Funny guys. The second night was the the burlesque show with the La Laws and I think that if you were on dry land and you were fully clothed, that would have been a fantastic show and everybody would have been blown away. Right. But we all <laughs> spent the entire day naked by the pool. We go to a burlesque show and the dancers were more dressed than the audience. Yeah. So it just didn't fit the audience very well. Like N not the swinger audience, not our audience. Correct. Specifically. And they had pasties on. And so the second half, I thought, maybe the pasties will come off. No. Nope. No. We, did, we saw no nipples at all in the burlesque show. No nipples. So it was very disappointing for, for us. But I get it. I mean, they're burlesque performers. They're supposed to leave something to the imagination. But eh. we would have, we would have liked right. something different. So it was okay. The third night, there was a comedian. She was a, a woman comedian. And she bombed. She it was did. it was bad. She she kind of got stuck on a a thread of jokes about LGBTQ people, and it's making references to Jenner. Yeah, the 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 Kardashian Jenner. family and Jenners and all that. Right, and. It may have been okay if she'd done a joke, uh, uh, yes. but it went on, on and now. on and on. And finally, somebody in the audience started heckling her. Oh, yeah. And it got, it got bad. So, it got uncomfortable. And, and it just ceased being entertaining because it wasn't funny anymore. It was awkward. We had heard some people said she was apologizing to the audience for losing track of where she was in her set. Right. And that was awkward. We weren't there for that part because honestly, I think we left after five or seven minutes. Yeah, I we, was like, I'm out of here. We yeeted ourselves honestly, out of there. Honestly, we were there with another couple and I said, I'm leaving. I didn't care about everybody else. I'm like, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm out of here. And they're like, okay, let's go. Yeah. So it, she may have been funny in a different context, but yeah. not for this ship. Not and for Not ship. with this group of people. No. Um, the Kings of Queen <gasps> were epic. Epic. I mean, they're a cover band, they're a tribute band, but holy crap, they were great. They had a, they had great energy. Uh -huh. There were a, a thousand costume changes. Like this guy <laughs> wore every Freddie Mercury costume that ever was. Yeah. Um, they were, like I said, dynamic. Full of just yes. action. It was great. You have to read up on them. They were using no vocal tracks, which means that all the five people in the band are trained singers. And so it sounded so good, so real. The energy was so high. You were transported back in time. Yeah. And I was... I was loving it. We 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 loved the show. It was they sounded really good. Now he, he he's not Freddie Mercury, but it was really good. It was it? so close. It he was, was like he was so close. Ninety five percent. I mean, it was close. Yeah, he, and and I think a lot of it was just the enthusiasm that that they, oh, yeah. they had for it, and like I said, it was infectious. We we loved it. The 
last night there was a comedian who had happened earlier in the, the week. We missed both of those. This is a second comedian. This is not the same comedian. A guy named Jason Blanchard, who's who's actually a celebrity ship comedian. So he was like the ship's comedian. And he had a whole bag of jokes that they were like, oh, you can't do that joke. You can't do that joke. And then this week they were like, oh, you remember that joke? You can do that joke <laughs> this week. Um, the, He's the, all... <laughs> The towels that they they tie up um, and make little animals in the cabins for you, and they kind of set uh, on your bed. Yeah, yeah. He'd made a towel vagina and had a whole, I guess, dialogue of, and a series oh, no. of jokes about the towel. Perfect for this particular audience. <laughs> Supposedly, the guy was great, so good that they brought him back for an encore presentation, and that's that that's fantastic. So I wanted to mention his name. So that he got some kudos because he impressed everybody and everybody was raving about him. That's right. And then lastly, almost every night we went to the dance club, at least for a little while, if not for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And the music was good. It was a lot of EDM music except for Rock Night where it was a little bit more rock themed. Mm -hmm. Right. And we danced with a bunch of our friends that were there, um, fellow podcasters, and everybody was in theme. Not everybody. A lot of people were in theme right. there and just living it up, bouncing around on the floor, having a good time. The drinks were flowing and everybody was just, just going time of their life. Crazy. Time of their insane. life. Insane. I loved it. It was very high energy. And that's what I need, being an introvert. Especially late at night. <laughs> yes. 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 All right, so the last part is our swinger experience, and we're going to let you know how that went. The playtime experiences, we had some in the playroom a couple times, yeah, yeah. and then we actually had one in the cabin. So that was different and that, new. Well, it actually wasn't new. We had one of those in our last cruise, too. Right, but we we usually like to play in the playrooms for a couple reasons one the the added visual and auditory uh -huh. stimulation but also not to mess up our bed so right we don't have extra sheets although tip if you look under your bed oh, you yeah. will see a bag full of extra sheets we find that on the last day of the cruise Wish I would have known that. Yeah, and, and and extra towels. Maybe your cabin has it. Maybe it doesn't. Ours did, and we like we said. Yeah. Wish we'd known that earlier. Yeah, but if you want to hear the sexy, sexy nature of those stories, we're gonna put those up on Patreon for y'all. We also recorded a nice, sexy video on our balcony, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, and we got that idea from our, well, I'll tell you in a second where we got that idea. So we went to some workshops and some classes. Yeah. We tried to get into some paid classes, signed up for the wrong ones. And I will, I will tell you, if you wanna sign up for a paid class, do it the day you get on the ship. Right. Because it books up fast and they put you on a waiting list and you'll never get on there. Yeah. So they're worth it. Uh, a lot of good uh, feedback from all those classes um, because oh, we yeah. signed up for the wrong one and we canceled and wanted to get into the one that we didn't sign up for. It was too late. So right, we missed that. We missed that opportunity. But everyone we talked to about the the seminars, there was one about prostate massage. Everybody raved about that. Yep. Uh, the the others, the ones that we wanted to go to, which was about um, in a sense vaginal play and, and fingers. And that was supposedly very good. Right. And we were bummed we missed it because we, we really wanted to go. And we were in the line and signed up for the the, the wrong one. Is yeah, what that's what happened. happened. Yeah, I got distracted by the beautiful people. Yeah. <laughs> the sexy, beautiful people standing in my line. The, so if you, I mean, if you want more details about all the different kinds of seminars, we did cover that in our pre-cruise episode. So I would encourage you to go back and listen to that. Um, and it's also published before the cruise sets sail in a book. So you, you can get it then too. Yeah. Um, but there's always some sort of class schedule where there's, there's just great stuff, uh, toy seminars and things like that. So anyway. 
talk about the free seminar. Yeah, so there was there were two seminars we were we also wanted to go to that were free. One of them we missed, and we got a little taste of it in the second seminar that we went to, which was be a porn star and how to make money in porn. Well, we were dying. Like we were like, okay, tell got, us all the secrets. We want to know. <laughs> so Naomi Fox and Peter Fitzwell were running a, a, a class, the seminar, on video angles, lighting, talking about basically the production aspects of making homemade, homemade porn. And it was great. Um, they had lots of cool tips. Uh, it was direct experience that they'd had. They had started off making homemade porn for OnlyFans and then eventually got hired as professional porn stars and now they work in the industry but they also yeah. still make OnlyFans content why because it's actually more lucrative for the models <laughs> through yeah. OnlyFans which we didn't know hmm. they also told us uh, a little bit of the history of porn and one from their other session because they had extra time at the end and they let us all know that there's no such thing as fluffers. Nope. We didn't know this. Everybody talks about fluffers. And the story basically was, if you can't get hard having sex with the stars that are being paid, they're not. the directors are not going to pay for another woman to come and help you do your job. Right. <laughs> and after he said that, I was like, Oh. oh, yeah, that actually makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have a backup mechanic if the first guy can't work on your engine. Right? Don't work like that. No, work like that. And the other piece that was fascinating was, and, and this isn't a slight on all the porn stars, but that they preferred working or, or playing with swingers because swingers tended to be more respectful and boundaries and... All of the stuff that, that we talk about with consent, right? swingers are better at consent than porn stars are. <laughs> right. Um, I found that very interesting. I just had never thought of that. Well, and it kind of, it sort of makes sense, but it, it also it kind of doesn't, doesn't make sense because these are your co-workers. Yeah. If you're a professional porn star, you would think there'd be an equally high level of respect. respect yeah. But, but there's something about the swinger culture and the lifestyle that it's really ingrained in terms of mm -hmm. asking permission before you touch, being respectful, not too grabby. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, it was, that was fascinating. I know. It made me feel good to be a swinger. Yeah. Yeah. We got a gold star. We, 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 <laughs> we didn't got even a know. gold star. <laughs> pool time. We spent less time at the pool this year. And. That was, we didn't miss it. Um, I, I think we had a good time last year in the pool, but this mm. year we were, we were doing so many other things. So back to the choose your own adventure aspect of the cruise. Right. And we did walk past the pool a number of times and saw nudity was plentiful. <laughs> it was. There were, there were lots of, <laughs> lots of boobies um, out <laughs> at the pool and a lot of dancing. So they always have a DJ at the, at the pool time. And people were having, they were doing line dancing. They were doing all kinds of, you know, games. Oh, yeah. Describe two of the games. Yeah. So one of them was musical eggplant. Wait, I have to describe this. All right. They weren't passing it. They were, the guys were standing in a circle face out with their eggplant. And so the girls would go around and grab the eggplant. And when the music stopped, if you're not holding an eggplant, you get kicked out. Picture musical chairs with egg, yeah. eggplants instead. Yeah, it was amazing to watch. It we were hilarious. standing up on top of the balcony looking down. It was I got to see everything. It was awesome. And, and some of the ladies were lingering a little more than they were supposed to yes. during the game. Um, and, and Malcolm kept saying, <laughs> "You gotta move. move. You gotta, you gotta move. keep moving. You can't, you can't stay there. <laughs> you can do that after." <laughs> Got to keep moving. The other game, um, which is one of my favorites, is the car wash and a uh, little, little oil and a little soap. soap and body rubbing. And you kind of run through the middle of the line. Two rows of girls and you squeeze through and yeah. Yeah, get a nice rub. Yeah. 
And last or almost last is health, health aspect. Uh, once again, get your sleep and try and hydrate. I tried my best to hydrate and I still had a hard time. And by the end of the cruise, I was starting to slow down a little. I was tired because I didn't, I wasn't hydrated enough. Uh, next time I'm going to bring my cup. A lot of people walked around with their, you know, their, their Yeti cups or sippy cups, whatever. They just brought them from home right. or they bought one at the store. And when they got into town before the cruise, you have to have it. I mean, you just do with all the drinking in the sun and, 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 the, and all the, the different foods that you're eating, maybe you're having more salty foods. You just, oh my goodness. Yeah. So sleep and hydrate. Uh, one of our uh, other favorite podcasters that were also there, Two Hot Wives, they were disclosing how they had partied so hard the day before that they just slept the whole next day in the solarium. So you, you get to do really cool stuff. You know, sleeping in public in a nice solarium where it's warm and cozy, right? And naked or with a towel, whatever you want to do. Like, it's, again, however you want to do your vacation. Right. And uh, we did, yeah. And to kind of touch on that a little bit, you end up having to make a kind of a binary choice between staying up late and partying yes. or getting up early and doing seminars and meet and greets. Right. There, there is a trade off and it, yes. it is a choice. Right. Um, but you can't do it all. There's just so you much. You just can't do it all. No. Yeah. You'll, you'll absolutely burn out if you try and do yeah. every single thing on the cruise and maybe do a little bit of both. Right. Like, right. You, you stay up one night because you really like the theme and the next day, you know, you sleep in and then that day you don't stay up late and you get right. up early. Exactly. The last thing I want to talk about is vaginal health, which is my personal passion. And one of our play sessions, one of our play partners, the lady had BV. So we had to strategically figure out you know, we have methods on how to get around that and still have a great play experience. So we did, it, it was a fabulous time, but it did limit, you know, some of the options of things that I wanted to do with her and some of the things that you know you could do with me right. and you could do with her. So it, 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 it limits your choices, but you can still have a lot of fun. You just have to be mindful and, you know, we didn't, t we didn't say anything. We didn't tell, you don't have to. Right. You don't, you can just take care of yourself and you can ask for, you know, certain things, um, during that session, um, like, you know, cleaning of hands and cleaning of the face before you, you know, if someone has been with her and you want someone to play with you, you can ask specifically if the guy go do that or the woman go do that. Um, and there, uh, people are always happy to accommodate. Yeah. So, and to be even more clear, we often ask when there's going to be a potential swapping of fluids between people, yeah. finger play, et cetera, that the gentlemen wash their hands or the ladies wash their hands anyway. Exactly. Be, because it's better not to transmit stuff between people, period. Yeah. And my vagina is a little more sensitive, so it tends to kick things off. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to have to deal with that. So if you want to know the details, the better and greater nitty gritty details, we did it in three episodes. We did it in 49, 70, and 80. So go check those out and we'll list them in the, in the show notes. There were some interesting swinger definitions that came up towards the end of our cruise. When we were talking with people, they had uh, questions for us about, for example, an interview question like, are you at are you a collector or a connector? And I was like, ooh, that's a very good question. And I was like, hmm, I'm a connector. I used to be a collector, but now I'm a connector. But being a collector isn't necessarily a bad thing because sometimes you need to collect in order to connect. Right. So in the beginning, we didn't really know anybody. And so we kind of collected people before we could connect with them. And it takes a while to get those connections because people are in and out of the lifestyle as we've talked many, many times before. And there's also indirect collecting where you, you don't, your intent isn't to basically put notches on your bedpost, oh, but yeah. you just don't connect with people. And so you do end up being kind of a, a serial 
you know, non-monogamous where you're you're trying couple after couple after right. couple because you know you just don't click quite what you the way you right. thought you did. And I think maybe their 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 question was more about their intent. Some people just don't want to make those relationships. They just want to have the sex. They right. don't want anything else. And and that's fine. And if that's your method, that's that's your your jam, then that's maybe not be for the other person. So right. interesting way to put it. Uh, then someone else said there are three types of swingers, the window shoppers, the daters, and the DTFers. And I thought that was a really fun way to put it kind of in those categories. Yeah. I'd never heard that before. So that was kind of fun. I had to write that one down. I was like, Ooh, I guess yeah. And, and a lot of those were just different ways of describing what we talked about in our other episode about the five different types of swingers. They had different labels for it right um, but they were very similar to what we were talking about in the previous episodes but we yeah we had to take note of those because they were they were absolutely interesting to hear how different people describe the same thing i know i was like oh other people have some fun ways of kind of categorizing categorizing where you're at and you know how to navigate you know because we all i hate the labels but we we live our life by labels you know we that's how we navigate through down the road Right. Through life. And in conclusion, we had a great time. Yeah, we had a great time. Um, like we said at the beginning, every cruise is different and your experience is going to be different mm -hmm. uh, depending on which things you want to do, which things you did figure out that you're going to do and which things you're awake to do. Right. Um, your experience is going to change from cruise to cruise. And so would we go back? Yes, we will absolutely do another swing or cruise but probably not for a little while. We're gonna try something different. So if you've got ideas about other things we should try out, <laughs> yes. um, and we're thinking things that are maybe a little different than the normal desire or hedo types of resort things, right. um, we're looking for interesting stuff, different stuff that other people yeah. maybe might not know. So if you know any, send us a message, okay. leave us a phone message, we have a phone number, the naughty people have some fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll try one of their things. Very possible, very possible. So if you like this episode and you want to hear more of our stuff, please subscribe, please like, please share. Please do the little ding-dong bell pineapple thing. Right, get notifications when we have new episodes. Yes. Um, and tune in next time.